Here's a subject I've been meaning to tackle for a long time. I get this question all the time. Hey, I'm going to go look at a Cougar this weekend. I found it on Craigslist, eBay, whatever. And I want to know what should I look at, where should I look before I make a decision? Well, I just bought this Cougar here out of, out of Brush Prairie, Washington. I looked at it three times and I spent a half hour to hour each time. And a few days later, after really going over it, I found I made, you know, I missed some stuff. So I thought, man, if I, who's bought over a thousand cougars over the years, make a mistake here and there, man, it must be really scary for the average guy. So let's walk through this 1970 cougar together and see if I can't point out some things you should be looking for. I find it's best to take two sets of eyes with you. Here's one reason. One guy can be talking to the, to the owner, getting history and stuff and clues and asking technical questions while the other person can just take some time and look without being interrupted. Sometimes if you have the owner right there, you feel pressured to hurry up and, and uh, make small talk and uh, you, 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 maybe you don't want to wiggle things or touch certain areas because he's looking. Get your friend on the other end of the car to talk shop while you really look it over. The first thing I do is just stare at it for a good long time. Just, just look at what it can tell you. Get down on all different levels and all different lights. And this one looks shiny. Uh, it's a California car, so we know we're not going to find much rust, but it's a lot of money. So let's really look at what's going on here. Let's look at gaps. Now, these cars weren't lined up perfect from the factory, but I'm seeing some things right now that just aren't right. Here's one. Look at this gap right here. That should remain even. Look at that. It disappears there. Oh, look here. I can't get my finger in here. But over here I can. Again, look at that. Now this bumper's obviously been re-chromed. I'm guessing, like most 70s, it was bumped. And when they straightened it out, something didn't get right. Let's go look for some more clues when we open the hood. Now, this is one of the most key areas. I look for an untouched core support. I look for original spot welds. I look for rust. I look for uh, holes in the shock towers. I look for everything to line up. This is important because this is a Cobra jet. We want to see telltale signs of a rebody, of a wreck, of whatever. So the first thing I notice is this hole isn't just right here. Well, the core support looks pretty straight. It looks original. So you might just talk yourself into passing over that. Take a close look. It should look just like this size. It should be symmetric here. When I reach on the other side, it's been welded. Also, this should be pretty much a 90 here. I go over here, it looks a little rounded out. It looks a little stressed here. I see a little wrinkle here. I like this, original spot welds with no rust here. If I see no spot welds here, that's because somebody's puttied over this because they've replaced an apron. So I like seeing those original spot welds, all four places. Another thing when I look down in here, I see a service replacement sticker on this lower valence. No big deal, most cars have had their valence replaced at one time or another. But look at this, here again, this gap is not lining up right here. That's just way off. This whole panel looks to be shifted this way. Well, here I see a wrinkle. And I feel under that wrinkle, aha, Bondo. This is not an untouched piece. So I've determined this has been in a front end collision sometime. Doesn't look to have been bad, but it makes a difference. And sometimes if you can kindly, politely, tactfully point it out to the owner, sometimes he's never even noticed. Oh, wow, I've owned this car for 18 years and I've never really noticed that. Might make a difference in the price. Let's keep moving on. Here's another thing I'm usually weak on. About half the time I forget my flashlight. In addition to a flashlight, I sure like these little $15 glasses I got at Lowe's. There's stuff hidden in here. We gotta find it. We're only gonna take this one time in the owner's driveway to get it or his dark garage and you can't assume he's got a light. We're not gonna get into a whole lot of numbers matching. We did that in another video on a 428 Cobra Jet convertible. Uh, this is a non-numbers matching car, but still we want to see how much is original here. At first glance, we'd say, oh, look at that, the S-tubes here. 
take a little closer look and you'll see tin snip marks down there. This is off an old pickup truck. It's meant to look like an original S2, but it certainly isn't. Just take time and stare and, and look for what you can see. Look for wrinkles where they shouldn't be. Look for uh, holes punched where they shouldn't be. Uh, take off the air cleaner. Wiggle things. Look, wiggle the fan. Wiggle the pulleys. Now that we've seen what we can see here, let's get under the car. And this is where I made my mistake. The owner didn't have a lift and I got my head under there with a flashlight and did the best I could. I made some mistakes because I didn't have a lift. If you're spending as much money as this car is, get it to a lift. Get it to a repair facility. I don't care if it costs you $100 to use it for 45 minutes. Wow, you'll find out a lot. And again, if you can discover some things with the owner standing there, maybe that's going to make a difference on the price. It's such a different view when you get it up in the air. Again, just take time and stare at it. Study it. Look for, look for things that shouldn't be there. I'm liking what I see here. I guess I see an incorrect fastener. No big deal. But I see the original underlayment. The sound deadener here. I see nobody's been messing with anything here. That all looks factory. Uh, this is a California car, so I'd expect it to be rust free. What do I see over here? This is odd. Looks like somebody's piled in some paper towels here. That's odd. Oh my goodness. Look at that. The original build sheet or remnants of, I can just barely see the little numbers on here. Again, this gives testament, oh, look at that, C9ZE something or other. This gives testament to the fact that this is a low mile original car. Look at that. The build sheet has been stuck under that sound deadener for many years. <laughs> Yeah, that's original, all right. That's really neat to see. That shows nobody's been here. I like that. Let's go to the other side. Okay, this side isn't looking as good. Look at this up here. Look at that wrinkle there. That's not right. Wrinkle there. Oh, look at this. Incorrect fasteners. It was in a fender bender. No surprise, a lot of these Cobra Jets hit the ditch at some point in their life. Let's look for mud in the fender. If we sight down this fender, we should see a nice crisp line. Seems to me it washes out right here. See, if you hear that? Sometimes I'll just go around a car like that and do this lightly. So if you hear how uh, it thuds on it? It should have a tinny sound, like... But when you hear this dull thud in here, there's Bondo, I bet. So let's take and feel up here. Yeah, you can, you can, I can feel my uh, hand, my right hand going like this, and my left hand, you can kind of sense the Bondo in there. They have gauges for this too, and I always seem to forget my gauge. If you forget your gauge, look for a refrigerator magnet. See where your refrigerator magnet sticks. When I was at the owner's house looking under his lights and the car was down, I noticed there was no uh, dimples here, no rust here. Well, now that I look at it closer, I feel a little bit of wrinkle in the paint. Most likely that's from where a rust repair was done. This paint was done in the 90s, so it's starting to come back a little bit, which tells me that was an inferior repair. Again, kind of normal even for a California car but you need to know what you're up against. Again, it feels kind of dull and thud, thud, thud right there. Let's open it up and see what we see. Hey, we hear a door buzzer, buzzer working. That's pretty rare. Look at this. They took the time and fixed this side, but look at that. They didn't do much to this side. Here's another area I always look at. I like to, even if you can't see it, feel for swelling along this ridge. This one feels pretty tight. 
until I get to right here. A little bit of swelling. See how the lip is pulling away just a little bit? That tells me there's a little rust starting in there, right about there. Here's something I didn't notice when I looked at the car. Look at this, look at this tar or whatever it is smeared on here. Why do we have that smeared on here? The original sound deadener should look more like this. We'll have to investigate further on that one. See this? It's, that tar is smeared all the way over here. That whole outer wheelhouse has got some tar on it. Let's look for telltale signs of maybe a quarter panel replacement. Sure enough, this lip is not what a factory attachment to the door jam should look like. Nor is this gap quite right. Again, a whole new perspective on a lift looking this way as opposed to looking down. I'm sure it was done long ago. Another thing to look for on a convertible should have a dip right here. That's good news. I can, I can feel that dip right there, which means it's not a reproduction and it's not a coupe quarter panel. This confirms it. Look here. That weld, that's anything but professional by today's standards. Here's some more of that smeared on seam sealer that does not look factory. That doesn't look factory either. Everything here just looks a little off compared to this side. This side looks untouched. Nice tight seam here. Everything looks factory untouched here. This is the way it should look. Now here's what this door jam should look like. Look at the faint outlines of the original factory spot welds all through there. This is original. That's just how it should look. Nothing's been tampered with. Even those little marks there look original to me. And again, on a convertible, not a coupe, not other years, Look for this little swoop here. You should see a little bit of indentation on an original convertible quarter panel. Hard to see. It's most prevalent right here. You could sure feel it, that's for sure. The seller probably isn't going to let you take up the carpets to look at the floor pan, so look close down here. Look for any uh, aftermarket sound deadener. Look for welds. Look for things that don't line up. Common thing is to see a drain plug here because not many people offer correct floor pan patches. We do on our site with this correct ribbing, but you'll see 67, eight floor pans in here a lot of times. This one appears to be original. Here's another area I always look. Even on West Coast cars, once in a while you'll see this happen, not too often, but water will get trapped in here. You'll see this area swell and start to rot. This one looks good and it looks original with original spot welds. Again, I'm looking for swelling. I'm looking for weld marks. Um, I'm, I like the original spot welds all around here. I'm really liking what I see. I always like to bring a little awl with me. Don't bring a big one because that looks pretty offensive jabbing at somebody's car. So a little one will usually do it. Just kind of probe in different area. Anything that looks suspicious, you know, bubbles and whatnot, poke at them with this. Again, it's good to have your friend there so he can be talking while you're doing a little of this. You're not out to ruin his car, but you're going to find the rust. Let's keep going. Looks like we got an oil leak here. Yep, I see, uh, I see a hokey power steering line fix here and that looks like uh, it's losing some power steering fluid here because of it and in addition to that we probably got an oil leak on a driver like this that's not your number one concern that can be taken care of for a hundred bucks in your driveway usually we're going to look for more rust and damage here almost always these will be a little bent up that isn't usually because of a collision people like to put uh, they like to put floor jacks on here, so that's why you'll see weird uh, bends in these. With a crescent wrench and a little heat, you can usually straighten those out good. That fender bender it was in, that, that messed that up. But let's sight down this frame rail here and look for, get it at eye level and look for straightness here. That's important. That one's looking straight. We need to always look under the battery tray too.
Here's something else I kind of look for. You want to see camber and caster adjustings within the same range. You don't want to see a whole bunch of threads on this one and minimal on this one. And by the way, here's a clue. This is a 69 style strut rod. See with the extra threads here, the step down threads? This is what you'd expect to see on a 70. So again, this side of the car sustains some damage and some replacement parts. I do like seeing these though. These are the original lower control arms. These little tabs here, that was part of the old Rotunda uh, alignment rack system. They haven't used these for years to set up the front end. But go ahead and look right here. See where that indexing hole is there? We don't want to see this one here and the other one way over here. Let's go look at the other side. Yeah, that one's around the same range. They should be pretty close to each other, not right on. That tells me that this front end wasn't whacked too hard. You won't be able to get the camera in here, but I like to get some light in here. A sunny day is best actually, but you, I'm looking to shine my light in there and I'm looking to see the original sound deadener in here. If that sound deadener is all beat off, there's a good chance this was dented hard. I'm also looking for worm holes. When I say worm holes, the way they used to repair dents is drill holes and put a slight hammer and bang it out and then they'd put Bondo over it and you'd see little pink worms coming through your holes. When I look in this one, and I can't see every bit of the door, but I am seeing much of it, and it looks good. And with a window down, I can also see through here by pulling back the rubber. I like what I see down there. All Cougars 67 to 73 have an issue with the cowl. Even California cars, leaves, pine needles, uh, rodents, whatever, can get in there and cause them to rot. The cowl is kind of a hard thing to fix. When that goes bad, usually your floor pans go bad. Now, unlike the 6768, you can actually take this cowl panel off. But do you think the owner is going to let you do that? Probably not. Here's a trick. You're going to need your LED flashlight, but you're going to probably can't see it on the film or on the camera, but I'm looking at a valley right around a hat. See that hat? That ledge, hat, raised lip, whatever you want to call it, is meant to keep the weeds and, and pine needles and stuff from falling down in your heater core. I do not see any leaves. I do not see any rat's nest. And I don't see any rust. That's a good sign. Look at that cowl floor or bottom surface there. Nice and solid. This may seem trivial, but if this is really a low mile California car, the windshield, if it hasn't been replaced, will be an original car light. And it does look like this is an original car light windshield. And by the amount of wear on the window, it appears it is not a high mile car. Very few speckles. Probably not driven in the mountains where they were sanding the roads either. Everything points to this car actually having 102,000 miles. I always lift up the trunk. I'm looking for a rear end collision. Again, I'm going to look for factory spot welds. I'm going to look for uh, original markings. Those shouldn't be covered over. I'm going to look for straightness on this panel. I'm going to look for Bondo. This is looking really good back here. Aha! Look at here. This is not right. This is where they seamed in the quarter panel. At first glance, I'm looking at this. This all looks original. So this makes me think this quarter panel hasn't been touched. Well, it wasn't touched here. It was touched up there. Here's the area I always look for rust. This is the low part of the trunk where the water tends to rest. From the factory, this was left unpainted right here. The reason it was left unpainted is that's how they suspended the cars down the assembly line. And when they were painted on the rack, you saw no paint right in here. 
very common for them to rust here and it looks like this one had some rust and they've repaired it right in here. I'm seeing the faint outline of a skim coat of Bondo hair. Very typical. You also want to see these original markings here. You don't want to see a trunk that's just flat back here. That means they've done some rust repair and just skimmed over everything. Here's the original D0WB marking. Look hard at that taillight panel for any wrinkles from where it was in a rear end collision. This lip here under the deck lid is, is very much a, a place to look. Just like your door, you're looking for swelling. So feel right along here. You don't even have to look. I can feel a little swelling right in here. That right there is not right. A little more swelling there. A little swelling right here. Not bad, but the beginnings are rust in there. Also, look, look that uh, it has the right deck lid. That would be an indicator of a wreck. Every year they change the deck lid, and on our website it points out the differences. 1970 was a one year only. 1970 has the cutouts like this for the rear spoiler if it were an eliminator. So we know that's a 1970 deck lid. 69 would have two holes for the hardware kit they used for the eliminators in 69. Here's one thing I always do. Look at this. Walk up the car and grab one of the windshield wiper arms. See how I have to give it a good tug to get any reaction there? You gotta wore out bushing in here. Actually on a 69 or 70, that's no big deal because this cowl panel piece comes right off. You can service everything right there, no big deal. 67 and 8 has to be done from under the dash because this is not a removable panel. That's a big deal on a 67 8. A lot of time, especially if you got air conditioning. Enough about that. Convertible top frames. In my opinion, people focus too much on the exterior top, tires, brakes, taillights, headlights, but I still want to cover a couple things. Feel the header panel in here. Almost all of them have some rot under here. And you can feel the low spots if it has substantial rot on this cast aluminum piece. That's an expensive uh, piece to replace if you can find it. They don't reproduce it. So if you do feel a lot of bumps and whatnot, don't dismiss it. Expensive. The other, the other, uh, the only other part that's really expensive and hard to replace on this is the two cast aluminum arms that are in the very back. Just know they're expensive and hard to replace. As for everything else, yeah, the headlights don't work half the time. You'll get a deduction in price when you buy the car because of it, but know that the vacuum lines, the check valve, the headlight switch are all available on our website and they're easy to diagnose. They're just vacuum operated. Vacuum to one port opens it, vacuum to the other port closes it. It's that easy. Tail lights, everybody, so many times when I've sold Cougars in the past, uh, people, do the tail lights work? Who cares if the tail lights don't work? It's a simple sequential unit. They're like 89 bucks on our website for a plug and play solid state sequential unit for this year. If it's not the sequential unit, it's the turn signal switch in the column. Good thing to know before you buy the car, but don't get all, get all excited about that. Look at the integrity of the car, the structure of the car. Look for rust, rust, rust. Look for previous damage from accidents. In the end, that's what makes or breaks a car. And those are the things you're gonna find out the hard way later. So know in advance, go get on a lift, whatever it takes, get the car on a lift. Pay the hundred bucks at the local shop. A flashlight and a floor jack isn't enough. Spend a good hour plus time. Pay somebody to go with you if you have to. Pay that shop owner to spend some time with you. Uh, you know, if it's a $2,500 car, um, yeah, kick the tires, walk around, poke it, make your decision. But on anything above that, well, it depends on what your risk level is. But I say, know what you're getting into ahead of time. And usually you're gonna find things that the owner of the car doesn't even know about and you're going to get that $100 fee back in negotiating down the price. So I'm going to do some other videos on all years of Cougars. This is just the first one. Uh, look for the other ones coming soon.